Punk Podcast, episode 15. Here we are. Yes, we are here. We are back. I know we had a hiatus. October is hard. October is hard for some people. Seasons change. Yep. I don't know. <laughs> Everything life is hard. Gets this year away. is hard. Life is hard. There. <laughs> Didn't it wasn't Ranson life. said life won't wait. There it is. Well, yeah. It's not. They wait. called it in the late '90s, or was that the yeah. early 2000s? I don't even know. Can't remember. Yeah. Can't remember. <laughs> I'm too disoriented. So we're going to talk about a couple of streams we watched. We're going to talk about some new music. Oh, I have an update. So a couple episodes ago, I was complaining. My grudge of the week was bands not putting measurements on their merch online, which especially right now, that's the only way you can support your ba- the bands that you like, and that's the only place you can buy merch. Yeah. And then AFI, I went to their site. They had measurements. And what did they I heard say? You. What did they, what did I say when I was complaining about it? I said, I'm going to spend more money. I spent $90 oh, oh. <laughs> on AFI merch. I am wearing an AFI tank top. Oh, that's right a sick now. shirt though. Yeah. So which brings me to another point. It is re-releasing merch. This is a newer thing that I've not seen before the last maybe year or two. And I'm seeing more bands doing it. Um, Thrice yep. did a re-release from Identity Crisis. AFI just celebrated, I think, 20th anniversary of Art of Drowning, which is a great album. One of my favorite albums of all time. Did and you just they say re- 20th anniversary of Art of yeah. Drowning? Holy yeah. crap. I know. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I'm sorry. I had to, that just blew my mind for a second. I had to rethink my life. I know. Yep. I just double checked because I also feel like that's weird, but it was released September, September 19th, 2000. Whoa. Here we are. Here we are guys. (laughs) And they re-released the merch from that era. Yeah. So what they did, and I still own my merch from that era. I remember the merch was hot back then. It was was so good. I own so much. Like I own three shirts that I found. Hot Topic was Filled with AFI merch. Like oh, the whole store. And I had, it was a thing. And they had all those dolls, the art and Artisia dolls, which I still yeah. have. Anyways, I have I wasn't even trying to build an AFI shrine in my house, but I like now kind of have a shelf of like I just put all my AFI dolls together and it looks like I own a shrine. So that's where we are. But then I pulled it out to take a photo because they were like celebrating it. On they were, the band was posting about it, and I was like, "Oh, I should take a picture of my stuff." And then I just kind of left it because I was like, well, "What am I gonna do?" But then they re-released the merch, and now I have to buy more because I don't want to wear my twenty-year-old merch because it is so rare that I don't want to like spill anything on it. Like I spilled pasta sauce cooking on this tank top today. And so then I bought more merch. That was the only reasonable thing. When you already own three Art of Drowning t-shirts, you just buy a tank top and a hoodie, you you, you know, to go with it. And that's me right now. But I did say if a band will put the measurements of their merch, I will buy it. And totally got suckered in, totally bought a ridiculous amount of merch. It was on pre-sale. So I finally got it this week which was really exciting. But then I saw Distillers re-release some merch, or Rancid's re-releasing merch. Actually, Thrice is re-releasing more merch. Like, everybody's doing that right now. And what are your thoughts? Are you, you know, into it? Are you not into it? I, it's funny because I had bought, re, I had repurchased an ACDC shirt from the Ball Breaker album, because it was my favorite t-shirt back in the day, and I gave it to my wife, and then I was bummed, because I didn't have it no more. So then I saw that it was re-released, I'm like, I wanna buy one, so I can actually wear it this time. And so I was excited. Mm -hmm. Uh, So they got me. And I've had to pay an arm and a leg for the stupid, I think it was $40 for a t-shirt. Yeah. Um, Which was made 20 years ago. So everybody's doing it, even, this is not just a punk thing. This is a rock thing, this is a, this is everyone's doing it because that was, I think when things started to get more expensive. Then, <laughs> Yeah. And that's like when people were getting into it and now they, the nostalgia is there. We are ripe for it. I guess it's mm-hmm. our time now to 
repurchase the things we already <laughs> bought because that there's nothing like we're old enough where we don't like new things. Yeah. So it's like, hey, you don't have to go buy the new AFI album that you know you're not going to like because they don't play the same way anymore. But you can go buy that old T-shirt back when you did. And you're like, wow, that was the time. That was yeah. the time of my life. Those were the good old days. So I think that's where we're at. We days. are now the good old days people. Oh, oh, my goodness. And when you said 20th anniversary, I, I didn't even know. Now I'm, like, I'm still reeling. And I'm just in real time. Whoa, we are at that point in time. We have like nostalgia for stuff that is modern in my mind. Like yeah. I think of AFI as a modern band. They are, but oh. that, <laughs> yeah, and it's crazy. It's crazy. But yeah, I think I would be a little bit bummed if they re-released exact same shirts and made it look like you couldn't tell the difference between authentic shirts and non-authentic. Like even if it's a minor detail, I don't, because then you feel gypped. Like, oh, you know I've what they're going to do? Mm. They're going to make it the same exact shirt, but make it distressed. You know how they Ooh, do that? Yeah. They and then they'll sell it at Target. Because that's like, remember when they were selling all the old 70s rock bands, like Steve Miller Band and ACDC, and all uh -huh. these shirts they were selling at Target, but they looked old. Yes. Now that it's going to be thing. all of yeah. our favorite punk bands from the 90s and the 2000s distressed t-shirts at target the new nostalgia uh, and we're gonna buy it and be like just like you said because you're i don't want the exact same thing but now that it's distressed woof this is acid washed this looks vintage i gotta have it yeah and, oh man and t-shirts have gotten different over the years they're much thinner and more comfortable and i think they're they've improved over the years because i do have a lot of old shirts and they're not as good as the shirts I buy now, even from the same bands. They also right. cost more money, but they are better. I'm okay with um, where they are going. Now. I think there was a period of time where every shirt I owned said beefy tea. Now things fit a little better. Yeah. I don't have a problem with bands remaking their merch because well no if i've worn out the shirt i want the i want i like my old shirt it's just rotten so i can't wear it anymore so now i can yeah. go get a new one so that's good yeah and, and i don't like the know, new design so works. and 20 years ago i wasn't thinking oh i better buy enough merch for this this is going to be the best album they made and then <laughs> and <laughs> who knew for a while and <laughs> you might want to buy you know seven more shirts i mean i only have you know five or six yeah. t-shirts from that era and okay. moving on you saw yeah. which i'm still bummed about the anti-flag documentary which before yes. you start your review i had set aside two hours today to go pay for this thing watch it get ready for the review i was gonna have everything turns out it was a one-time stream i missed yeah. it and if I want to watch it, I just got to wait a month or two because they'll put out a DVD next month. And okay, I guess that's what I'm going to do. But so I didn't get to see it. Boo hoo. Continue on. Tell me how oh. it was. So it was, they did a chat before the movie premiere. And I mean, it was just, all these chats are just too crazy. When you have so many people in a chat room, it's just scrolling through like at the speed of light. At that point, you can't even follow the conversation. Were they just reading the, the comment and then responding to it? Or were I they letting so. audio yeah, so, through? No, it was just typing. Um, and okay. so the band was in there, but I just stopped even trying to, I stopped trying to bother trying to keep up with it because it was kind of not doable. Um, but yeah, the movie was just kind of about how they got involved with how the band started, how they got involved with political activism and how kind of uh, Tom Morello discovered the band and took them on tour as his pick to open for Rage Against the Machine, which was a huge opportunity for them. And what I liked about this documentary um, is me and a friend were talking about it is all punk documentaries have the same players who are interviewed like there's always the Henry Rollins. There's like, it's the same 10 people are in every punk documentary I've ever seen. They have seen. the guitarist from Anthrax as well. I've seen yeah. him in everything also. Scott Sometimes Ian. Sometimes the singer of uh, Mighty Mighty Boston's is another, he's like one of the more popular ones. But this documentary did not have all those people. So that oh. was like, it, it interviewed, uh, they, you know, talked to uh, Tim 
from Rise Against. They talked to uh, uh, Tom Morello, but I mean, it wasn't like the exact same people you always see, which was cool. And what was interesting to me is the band talked about how 9-11 impacted them uh, because now they were in a band called Anti-Flag and it was like the most patriotic time in America. And so it almost broke, like they almost, they weren't sure they were going to go forward or how that's going to be received or if it's the right thing to do kind of thing. Um, yeah, I really, I enjoyed it. I would recommend watching it, especially if you like the band. Um, pretty interesting. I think there's another documentary about um, protesting that I'll probably check out maybe this week and maybe we'll um, check that one out. I don't know if that one's still streaming. Now, did it, did it play like a movie with a narrative, even though it's a documentary? Was there like an overarching theme that it was about or was it just a bunch of talking heads going through the history of the band? I think that there was a theme um, and they really focused on kind of changing how their goal is to, you know, make changes it, political or local or whatever, or even impacting. So there are some fans who, because they got into this band um, are now working for nonprofits and they're working on, you know, creating social change or people that were already starting to enroll in military and decided not to do it. Um, so I think that it was just kind of like what their mission is and how it impacts other people and what and impact they, they've had as a band. Was there a lot of talk about their major label experience compared yes. to their... Okay, they how did was talk that? About it. Um, it was interesting because, you know, we're talking about how we forget how long things like I forgot they were on a major label until <laughs> I watched it because it just seems so long ago. And it just seems, I don't know, I, it seems almost irrelevant. I think when we first got into music, labels were much more, they were bigger, it was a bigger deal. And now, that things are just distributed online, we're just streaming anything. It's, I don't even notice what label anyone puts out their album on anymore. I very rarely, I don't have a physical CD with the logo on it anymore, so I just don't pay attention. It's not listed on Spotify, I can go look it up, but that's an extra step for me. Um, but yeah, they did talk about that and how it was like a very shocking move for them and kind of how they got out of it and what they did with the money. Oh, well, what did they do with the money? Well, you have to watch the movie. Well, I'm already mad. I tried to watch the movie. <laughs> they recorded their friend. They built a studio that they uh -huh. now use. So okay. they were trying to like use the money in a smart and impactful way. And they're also, you know, are able to work with other artists and help them record and things like that. How would, uh, how would you rank it compared to other documentaries that you've seen about bands that you liked? I'm just trying to see how good. Is it in the middle? Is it better? Worse? It's, ooh, I'm trying to think. I feel like a lot of bands I like don't have documentaries about that, like most of my like really favorite bands. Well, I was so, wondering if it was, I guess what I'm trying to get at, was it like a fan documentary? Like remember the Rise Against one that was on DVD? This is a long time ago. We watched that. Uh-huh. Uh, and it was it was them, and it was just interviews with them. It was basically them selling their album that they just put out. Oh, uh, okay. And I was wondering if this was kind of all good stuff, pretty much just it was selling mostly good the, stuff. Whereas, um, like the Ramones documentary, you know, then you find out that the band members hate each other, and you know, one band member steals the other one's girlfriend, or like the Metallica one that's like three hours long yeah, and I feel like therapy it, and all that stuff. I understand the band better now, or I'm, I'm, I know more about the band and some of the background things that I never knew about, like their personal things that they've dealt with and things that inspire them. So I do recommend it, but yeah, you, sh you should be interested in the band if you're going to watch it because okay. I, I don't. As a standalone, as a standalone experience, eh, Unless you really know the band in the first yeah, place. Yeah, you need to like the band. Okay. Unless you're really into, you know, maybe activism or something like that. And you just want to watch it for that perspective. But, okay. yeah. So that was it. that's what it really was about. Them and their activism. Yeah, it was, okay. it was exactly. It was about okay. their activism. You know, because obviously it's such a big part of 
anti, like every time we've seen them, they talk about it a lot. They're very vocal about it and their merch reflects it. Their lyrics reflect that it's a, it's, it's a very, it's the other member of the band almost. There you go. Okay. And then to contrast that, you also watched the Mike Weeby stream yeah. as well, which I think you convinced him to do it when we interviewed him. It was your idea. He you're asked right. you about it. He's, you're like, oh, you should go, you might consider doing a stream with that. I can't remember the name of the company. But you, Stages. Uh, that's it. Yeah, he was thinking and then about he asked it. you, he's like, oh, well, what was that like? Tell me more. And then yeah. what? Two weeks later, that's exactly what he did. I think you did that. And I convinced AFI to put uh, measurements for their clothes. Clearly, they are tuning into the podcast and are what like, What is your next request? <laughs> Ooh, I have to be smart. I can't. I, is this well, like think a about it in the back thing? of your mind? I need to, you know, yep. how many wishes do I get? Oh. Think about it for a little bit in the back of your head because you right, have to describe right. what happened on the stream. What was that? Okay, so him and Ian, uh, who's the guitar player from Riverboat Gamblers, they played together. I, and they both played guitar, which I've never seen at a Riverboat Gamblers before. So that was cool. And then they drank a bunch of seltzer waters and they kind of reviewed them, but I missed some of that okay. technical issues. Um, was but it yeah, hard they seltzer a, or just? Yeah, 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 hard seltzers. They call okay. themselves the Seltzer Brothers or something. I think that was Okay, their... so they're drinking White Claw and... Yeah, 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 truly. Stuff. They were drinking okay. truly, I believe, okay, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and talking about all the different flavors, and I think spitting into a bucket, <laughs> like <laughs> they do with wine. Um, but yeah, they played uh, oh, okay, a couple of, okay. they played, they played some of their, you know, most popular songs. They didn't play very long, probably 30 minutes set. It wasn't very long at all. Um, but it was really fun. It was but just the two of them. Yeah, it was just the two of them. So and they're then, playing acoustic then I'm guessing. Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, and important. then they said they want to do more of these and probably even get other band members involved and they're going to do different songs, uh, than this time. So. Hopefully they came do another up. one. I missed that one completely because I'm not on Instagram. You know, I'm just going to have to get it. I'm thinking I hate it, but I'm missing too much stuff here. Yep. And I mean, you told me about it and then I was like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll get around to it. But the same thing with the anti-flag. I'm like, okay, I said some, it's already too late. I missed it. Okay. Oh, see, another reason to join Instagram is you would have known that it was AFI's Art of Drowning 20th year anniversary. Man. Would I have randomly thought of it without the reminder? No. <laughs> Could there be have. a different thing than to have to do social media to find things? <laughs> but that's the thing is like news don't cover. It's a 20th year of this album that sold 100,000 copies. Like that's never going to be. But that's the news I care about. Well, you know, there's like the punknews.org. And yeah. you, know, you go read that. I was just like, if there was something I was... Anyway, I'll babble about that some other time. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't found a good site that will keep me informed. That's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to like, yeah. for another episode, find places to find information besides Ooh. Instagram. That's what I'm hoping for because I hate okay. having to log in and like look at photos of people and I don't care about them. And, you know, I just want information. Yeah. I see. You want there. Instagram that's focused on text. See, it all goes back to it. How do you, does everyone enjoy consuming information? Is it video? Is it text? Or is it images? And you prefer text. Yeah, I was like, video is the worst. I have an answer if for you. If I have you. to watch a video to get information, I'm never going to do it. I have an answer for you. You should read Twitter. <laughs> there you go. Okay, I guess I'm just going to have to. Or Reddit. Those are more okay. text Reddit, based. okay. But Those are for you. Okay. Maybe. Well, again, see, I we'll, like, we'll, I like we'll do a review. We'll go okay. through them and we'll like try to find stuff and then we'll report back with what was useful and what okay. was not. I, they, I did say I, I'm going to do a review of TikTok, whether okay. or not it's good for punk. In, for, so I well, will, this would be perfect. So we'll, perfect. We'll, we'll do all the social together. media. All yep. right. Okay. Sounds I like good. it. Yay. Good. Yay. We got a new episode. Look at us. <laughs> we are just getting things done. So yeah. That's right. um, so yeah, that was a cool uh, stream. And then we're moving along into new releases. Laura Jane Grace randomly, just like out of the blue, I was surprised drops a whole album. Like not just a single, full yeah. album, Stay Alive. And actually she just did a stream yesterday, which I did not watch. 
So I don't know how when, but she was supposed to play Fat Mike's party. Uh, that was with, so bummed. Yeah, and we were really excited to see her, but that did not happen. But she did do her own stream. Hopefully, it was cool. I'm sure it was. Um, what did you think about the album? You know, uh, well, of course, it was had to be acoustic. Be, yeah. It's largely acoustic, I should say. So, okay. The, the, the thing I liked was the song Supernatural Possession. That could have been on an Against Me album. That's a great song. I liked it. If the whole thing would have been that, I'd be like, this is the best thing of all time. But then on the other hand, that would be an Against Me album. And I already like Against Me anyway. And then what's the point of doing a solo album if you're just going to play the same yeah. stuff that you would with your regular band? So, you know, unfortunately for me, I don't like the singing songwriter acoustic guitar stuff. And because of that, I couldn't get into the lyrics. Like, because I'm just like, I'm just not into this. And I'm sure the lyrics are good because Laura Jane Grace, yeah. I, great songwriter. I mean, yep. there's no problem there. I just kept thinking, I would rather have this been a new Against Me album, the full rock, full yeah. punk. And this was, you know, strummy, strummy. It had some, what, a, an electric elements in the background. Yeah. There was some, some songs had some drums. Yeah. There was a couple of overdub layers. And there, uh, another song was kind of rocking, kind of a little bit. I can't remember which one, but anyway. But anyway, I'm looking for the positives. Supernatural possession, that's where I'm at. And you're I laughing. Am dying. I am laughing right now so hard because I have literally, that was my favorite song on the album. So oh. <laughs> I, I, I'm looking at my uh, Spotify and I hearted that song because I wanted yep. to say, but it was like, the, it was the standout song of the album. And yep. I'm like, is this why we're friends? <laughs> <laughs> I hearted it too. <laughs> yeah, it was just like, that was the last one. And I'm just like, we didn't even talk about it until right now. So it's just so funny. Yeah. And it was so scary. What? I hit the play button and, and the first song is like doom da doom da doom da doom strummy yep. guitar. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to I'm gonna be so upset. I can't even finish this. And yeah. then you know you start hitting the next button, next button, next button. Oh yes. Yep. Here it is. Thank you. I'm still a fan of Lord Jane Grace. Yeah. I'm happy. Because what yeah. else am I gonna do? I'm just gonna start talking trash now and be a jerk. No, no. Supernatural possession. Great yeah. song. We're still friends. Yep. And yeah, and it's the same with like, there's against me albums that have those songs that I'm like not as into. I mean, they always have some more yep. of the folk songs and then I've always been more into their rock songs, but I mean, they're a great band. I like them, I, you know, but I don't like every song from any band probably. I mean, there's no. very few bands. It's, it's fine. You can like something a lot and still not like everything they make. <laughs> yeah, and interestingly, I like Against Me Now more than before. I think their albums have just keep getting better and better as a whole for me since uh -huh. their post-fat days. Uh, uh, I, yeah. I mean, I really like New Wave, of course. I mean, that's like the big, the big album. And then they went indie, more mm -hmm. indie, uh, their own record label, Total Treble, and more on the underground, uh, the blues <laughs> album. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and the one long. after that. Anyway, I really like those last two albums a lot, and so I'm always looking for the next against me, whatever. So there is something. There are a couple of nuggets to pull from out of this solo album for a, an against me punk fan, but as a whole, the acoustic stuff's not my thing. Yeah, so, and I wonder. Well, I, I was just wondering, like, who's it for? But then maybe it's just like, this is her artistic output and she don't care. This I is think just, so. I, I follow I her. I follow her on Instagram. It's the social network you should look up. <laughs> and <laughs> um, I don't know. I think she's been, it, it seemed like she was, you know, struggling with quarantine as everyone yeah. is. And, and I think it was probably like, that's what you do is if you, there's something that, you know, makes you happy or distracts you, like you should do it. And I'm totally happy she did it. And, you know, like everybody's just trying to stay busy. And like she, I, I know she was posting that she was, was taking a lot of really long baths for a while. 
Um, so it was, it was, it was interesting, uh, for me to see the, the updates, but apparently in secret, she was like writing a whole album. That's so, yeah. that's pretty cool. Well, I'm hopeful that writing this mostly acoustic album has gotten that acoustic stuff out, Ooh, of, her out of her system. And, and then, then, then the next yeah. against me is just like a barn burner, just like full on. That would yeah. that would be like, you know what? Now I like that acoustic album because it led to the greatest That's album true. of all time. That's what I'm gonna hope. I'm a I'm a positive person. That's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's right. We're yeah. very positive people. And then and another then, release this week is Touche Amore had an album, yeah. uh, a full length also called Lament. And you know, it was I it was like great. the album. It was a great album. That's what yeah. I thought. The thing that bothers me about Touche Amore is their stupid ass name. Like uh, you put out a great album, but I again uh, I have to knock you down at least a half a grade based on the name alone. So if it would have been an A minus, it's now a B plus. The album's now B plus because I don't like your name. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, did, a, did I just watch a YouTube video right before we recorded to learn how to pronounce their band name correctly? Yes, yes I did. <laughs> it's them and <laughs> Devil totally. Wears Prada. Those are like the, uh, my two least favorite band names of bands that I actually oh, really? like a little bit. I think I like Touche Amore more, more. I can't really remember yeah. Devil Wears Prada a ton off the top of my head, but I remember I we know, played I them on our radio the show. Movie. I was, it's like, yeah, I yeah, think but I remember we, you know, we played them, we played them all yeah. the time. Like this was yeah. a long time ago. So, you know, yeah. we were making the scene back in the day and they were back on the list. They so, were, yeah. But this Lament, man, that's a great album. That's what I thought of this is, this is not, a collection of individual songs that are just strewn together in some sort of uh -huh. haphazard way. I thought this was like from start to finish a, a, uh, a jigsaw puzzle, a multi-layered effort uh, where the whole thing put together, it just becomes part of a whole. And yeah. it was, it's post hardcore, yes. a little bit like Thursday, a little bit at the drive-in, a little bit like uh, Thrice's weird period, their artsy fartsy period, but then the sound is super high fidelity. So this is not like an underground raw thing. This is like full on high quality, post hardcore, and as a whole, I really yeah. liked it. So it is so funny that you said they sound a little bit like Thrice and Thursday because the way I found out that this album was released, members of Thursday and Thrice posted about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, and because I'm, you know, I'm always looking for new stuff. And I was like, oh, I got to check it out. And I think it was the singer for Thursday posted it. And then the drummer from Thrice posted. I'm like, ooh, this is like the second recommendation I got. I am definitely checking this out. And I was like, okay. And it was funny because I people thought people in bands that I like because when they recommend something, it was good. Yeah, and, and I I looked uh, when I heard about it, I was thinking, oh, it's got kind of like an at the drive it without the angular weirdness. It's kind of like a straightforward. Yeah. Or and like then I looked, maybe, and it's the same producer. That's why oh, the relationship of or like a harder lament. circus survive maybe. Oh too. yes, that's even that's your your description's even better. Yeah, because Circus Survive is like that, but it's just, there's like a lot more mellow. And this is just like, yeah, yeah like this would be such a fun album to go see live on their yeah. tour. Like this would be such a fun show. So hopefully we get to go see them soon because this would be amazing live. I would like it if they played this one from start to finish, that Ooh. kind of thing. That, you know, uh, you know, they probably won't be doing that, but. I would like it because I'm not there's, I'm not a singles guy with this band where I'm like, oh, yeah. this song, this blah, 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 blah. To me, it all kind of sounds the same, whatever. I'm yeah, not a yeah, huge yeah. fan. But uh, this album is a great album overall. So give the whole thing to me live. That sounds like a great that idea. Live good. stream this one. Do, do yeah. it. Ooh, I'll, I'll have to. That's see my recommendation know. is the thing to do. You know, not yours. That's actually going to happen. But yeah, that, that yeah. was like my contribution to what should happen. There you go. Maybe, you know, next week we'll be back and, you know, there was a stream. And I would know? like them to change their name, but you know, ah, okay. 10 years later, it's not happening. 
<laughs> it's like Certainly it's, not. It, it, it's kind of like how a couple of bands this year have changed their names because they were not they were kind of racist um, yeah they i was trying to think of a better word for but in sense some of them were but yeah insensitive. there you go well, like slaves slaves change their name i don't know what yeah. i think they haven't changed it yet but they are going to change it or maybe yeah and like lady now. antebellum or something yeah that's that's the other band. um but Dixie chicks Dixie, yeah, and so now there's there's going to be a whole flood of bands changing their names based on you complaining. I'm, I'm sure that that'll yeah, be the then that, next that brings play. up a big one. Is what about Turbo Negro? I don't know. I don't. Uh, I don't think they'll ever change their name. But they've changed their name before. They were Turbo Negro like three times or four uh, times. But I think 20 years have gone by, and they're probably not going to bother. So and they've enough. changed their singer. Yeah, they changed the singer. It's true too. So. Well, that's a good time Who to knows? change the name when you change the world. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Aladdin. <laughs> uh, uh, Pup. Pup has a new uh, single that's mm -hmm. from an EP. The song's called Rot. I really like that one. Uh, this to me is just modern punk. It, it doesn't even have to have a sub-genre within it. It's not, it's not really pop punk, although it's kind of somewhat pop punk uh, it's not hardcore but it's got a, it's a hard aggressive song so this is just i like that it's just a straight modern punk song not too overproduced this is just like at your throat and it's still catchy so that's still i mean not like catchy poppy catchy but like this is a good catchy song i like this band now i'm late to the party they're gonna put out a the, I think the full EP, this is just leftover songs from their last album, apparently. So there'll be this little EP that comes out within the next couple weeks, and then they'll do their full length. So that's what I'm really looking for. This is just a prelude to things to come for me as far as Pup goes. I'm going to uh -huh. be on the radar for Pup, like I'm on the radar for War on Women. Like I'm, He's like, okay, I got to start paying attention to these bands because they're, they're mm -hmm. releasing singles and they're getting me pumped about the new album when you when you join instagram you'll probably follow them first <laughs> <laughs> i know it's so lame i guess i have to do it and not complain about it whatever <laughs> your man, life man, is so man. hard <laughs> so hard you don't how, even understand how, how you it's suffer so hard to join instagram <laughs> oh. oh it's such a time suck too i don't want to ramble on too long about it. So, you know i already waste enough time now i have to waste even more time oh my yeah sorry oh uh, yeah my last pick that i i had for this week was refused oh there we go born on the outs mm -hmm. and apparently i did very quick research after i listened to the song apparently it's inspired by some edm song that came out in like 2012 or something like that so it's not fully an original composition or something it's oh. like taking elements of edm and that kind of explains why the song has kind of that electronic dance oh, yeah. drum beat i still liked it though i just thought refused is you know they do more now than they did when they were first trying to do things <laughs> and they're making more music that is it's more straightforward than it used to be also I mean, this is just a straightforward rock song in my mind i mean so i like yeah. it i, I like it refused too. We I, refused was the last band we saw before quarantine. So yeah. uh, they were great. I had a great time at that show. They were kicking kicking some butt. This song yeah. Born on the Outs kicked some butt. I got no complaints. Yeah. I I'm like curious it. Curious if they're making more music or they must be. They are. Because this are. is this cool. isn't this is an EP. Uh, yeah. and then after that they're gonna put out something after that as well. So they're they're working, they're doing stuff. That's, I'll be looking out for more from them as well. Oh, I haven't mentioned Fat Mike this episode yet. Oh, and he was in the We're hospital this week. What? Uh, I think he had hernia or something. Yeah, he's been posting about it. But then he said he is out and he feels better than he has in years. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he posted a picture of himself from like 20 years ago. Oh, Out man. of the hospital, my stomach feels fine, and I'm feeling younger and healthier than I have in years. <laughs> <laughs> and 
Any complaints uh, this week? A grudge, perhaps? Always. My complaint this week is people who throw their trash on the ground and they don't clean up after themselves because my dog almost choked on a chicken leg today uh, on our walk that somebody just threw out a fried chicken leg on the ground. And Careless. Yeah, and I had to like wrestle her for chicken leg, which is really hard to do with a dog. But also, aside from dogs finding things, it's just disgusting. I've seen, I've seen like use tampons, use condoms, condoms wrappers, food. Like, stop doing that. Throw your. I'm glad you're having fun. Throw it in the put, trash. Put your used condom in your pocket, like a responsible <laughs> yeah, person. Yeah, like a responsible <laughs> adult. Okay, if you are, you know, if you're having sex outdoors cool just throw out your your condom wrapper you know, or and at your least condoms when you're uh, done. wait a minute you would have to use a lamb skin condom because i would feel like that's oh, more was... more compostable <laughs> than the latex yeah. is that right so Probably. so you're fine so if you want to have sex outside and throw the condom on the ground that's really not the problem it's that you didn't use the lamb skin ah. so it could you know be one with nature within a couple yeah. of days or however long it takes yeah. You need to rephrase that. <laughs> oh, so not people who throw out their trash, but people who use latex condoms That's and don't right. properly Listen. dispose of them. Okay. And people that use you know, plastic containers for their food and that's, you know, if you're dropping your trash and it's compostable, well, isn't that, that's fine. But is it? It takes like a hundred years for it to decompose. I don't want to walk past your condom and uh, burrito that you almost finished eating okay, for 20 years. Okay, you know, now upon further review, I, I now agree with you completely. I was, I was trying, yeah, I was really, trying. I was trying to be like, no recycling is to, fine. <laughs> yeah, but just, just don't be a jerk. Throw it yeah. in the trash. What about you? Do you have a grudge this week? Uh, actually, I don't have a, I have a grudge. I, whoa. My grudge was missing. Like, that's my own fault though. So it's like hard to, Hard to have a grudge when it's your own fault, like completely. I missed the <laughs> anti-flag documentary because oh. it was my fault. I mean, that yeah. was my grudge was that I missed it, that I set aside a couple oh. of hours and I was all watch ready it. to watch it. And it was going to be a good Sunday and everybody yeah. was going to be so happy. And then no. And then I got pissed. But yeah. it was my own fault. I have to take responsibility. So my grudge is myself. <laughs> uh. I can give you a grudge if you want one. Throw it one my way. Because I had another incident this week. I cut my hand opening a box. But when Done you it. have a cut during a pandemic, when you're A, constantly washing your hands and sanitizing your hands, does not feel good. But you uh, have to use the alcohol because now you're not, you even have to sanitize more because now you have an open cut. You know, I appreciate you throwing me that grudge, but that is, again, your own fault. <laughs> I know. It is my own fault. So be oh. careful. Be careful out there. I don't want to take that boxes. one from you. I'll let you have that one. <laughs> be careful with those boxes, people. They'll just coming out <laughs> and cutting you. Oh, boy. All right. Well, then next time, I guess we'll be looking at the places to find punk news on social media and yes. with reviews of them all. And speaking of, everyone should follow us on at Almost Punk on Instagram. I think it's the only social media platform we are currently active on. Oh, that's changing soon. But that's after changing we do this. soon. I got to make accounts for all these things. So we might even have a Pinterest. I don't know. <laughs> almost Punk Pinterest. <laughs> yeah, well, we can pin, you know, a, Almost Punk approved recipes, Almost Punk approved fashion. Uh, all the 20th punk anniversary merch. <laughs> oh see i mean i already on our instagram i have uh i i collected all these masks i found when all these bands were oh that was your idea too masks. that was also my idea i am like this year i'm just a week ahead of the thing like i call it and then it happens the following week well, or two predict predict me next time what, what's, what's going on so much it's pressure nasty. can't can't it's keep a it lot up of pressure i you can't force inspiration. You know, uh, you know? That's a good point. You're not going to get quality content. I have. I, I will think of stuff, though. So it's basically, once it hits your brain and you say it, that will it be happens. the thing. But you're not just yeah. going to pull something out of your butt. Yeah. Because that won't work. And yeah. I've never tried to, like, 
you know, manipulate it and say it out loud so that it will okay. happen to cause a ripple in the timeline or something. No, no, yeah. no. This has been, this, none of this has been premeditated. Got it. All right. Well, and that's what's working. So I don't want to mess with the form with the women's <laughs> formula here. Well, we'll have it next time on Almost Punk Podcast. Yes. All right. Yes. Over, over and out. And we'll out. see you next time. Bye. Bye.